Hey, what's up people? How are you guys doing? I just finished recording a very simple video um, with nine facts. I think it was like nine facts about just saving, just becoming a better you. And you guys, I'm definitely going to link that video below. So if you have not seen it, then you definitely need to see it. Now, this particular video, this is like my in-depth video. Like I'm about to like get grimy with you guys. Okay. We about to talk about the no, no. Okay. The things that you've been doing that you know, you should not be doing because right now you clicked on this video because you want to change your life just like I'm trying to do and I'm trying to bring you on with me. Just like I brought you guys on for weight loss journey. This is our credit journey. We're still going. <clears throat> so what I am just going to talk about now is trying to repair your credit, trying to just do something better for yourself, put yourself in a better financial position. And yes, it is possible no matter where you are. If you're sitting on the couch and you're watching me, you're just like, I got bill collectors calling me. My mailbox is full of stuff. My credit is, you know what I'm saying? There is a way out. There is a way out. Trust me. I know. Like, I'm not just making these videos because disclaimer, I'm not a professional. I'm only telling you what I've done and what's helping me. And I hope that it can help you tweak what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, and share this video. So, um, let's just get started. The number one thing that anybody, you, me, anybody has to do when you make the decision that you want to do something different in your life. It's a conscious decision. It's a conscious decision. It has to be in your heart. It has to be, it has to be a mindset. And then you're like driven. Like, this is what I'm going to do. If you're sitting on the couch right now, you're sitting in a chair and you're watching me and you've decided to make that change, the decision is already there. It's in your mind. It's in your heart. Run with it. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let these side things, these parties, clothes, and just stupid things that have been ruining your life. The reason why you have all these bills now, forget about all that stuff and just get tunnel vision and just see the prize. That's it. You made the decision. That's number one. Now everything else will just fall into place. Okay. I have my little pad here because I wrote like so much stuff down. Okay. So the first thing that I did when I made this decision, I went ahead and I got a copy of my credit report. It's very easy to get a copy of your credit report. You can just Google it. And I think you just, it's like a 1-800 number to like the different bureaus and you just call and you can request a free copy of your credit report your credit report. I don't think they give you the scores. You have to pay for that, but you can get a copy of your credit report once a year from for free from all three bureaus. So that would be who TransUnion. I was about to say Expedia, <laughs> Experian. And who was the other one? Equifax. So you can get those copies. So you, you have to have that paperwork. I know you don't probably want to see it. You know, maybe I didn't want to see mine, but I did it and you know, they, they mailed them all to me. They came within days of each other. And so I had everything right in front of me because that's when I needed to start to really look and see like who I owe, who I have been late with. Not that you don't probably know these things, but you need that stuff in front of you. Then the next thing that I did was I joined a credit monitoring site and, and in the beginning I did join the free ones. I always talk about these before I've made videos about these, but credit karma and credit says me, no, they are not paying me to make these videos or anything like that because people are asking me, no, I just joined them. And it made me feel so good because there you're able to actually look at your, what they call FACO score, because it may not be your exact score. Um, you know, you kind of like have to pay for that. And that's like through myfico.com. But the thing is you just want to see your credit report. You just want to see your roundabout score and you want to see what's going on. Because if someone takes something off your credit report, if someone adds something to your credit report, if there's an inquiry on your credit report, these sites will let you know that. So that's very, very good. And you have your own account, you know, um, you set up your own profile and they always give you recommendations. And I love them for that. I love love them for that. Okay. Um, do I want to talk about, so I look at bills as like, you know, when you go to your mailbox now, mind you, you need to go to your mailbox, even though you may not want to, cause let me tell you how I used to be. Um, I would just not go to the mailbox for like a month. 
until the mail just like packed up because I knew what was in there. You know, you don't want to answer the phone. You don't want to go to the mailbox because you know it's just bills. It's just bills, 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 bills that you're making. And if you're one of those type of people and you have a credit card and you're calling that 1-800 number to not see if your payment went through, but to see how much available credit you have left, you know, like if you have $100 left or $20 left, then you need to be listening to what I'm saying, right? Because you're one of those people because you have what I call unnecessary debt in your life, right? Because... Oh, I have to look at it like this. There is some debt that you cannot get away from, like your housing. Um, you may have a, you know, electricity, uh, you know, your phone bill, like recurring bills like that, that is just a part of life. And, you know, maybe your car note and, you know, your gas money, stuff like that. Those are just bills that you can't get away from, right? And then you have what I call unnecessary debt credit card bills, department store bill, clothing bills, payday loan bills, unnecessary debt that we keep accumulating. And when you go finance things, you know, through like secondary stores, um, just for, just for no purpose, but just to have it and you got approved for the credit. So instead of just saving up the money to pay for it, you get it on credit. So now you have another bill and that's half of the stuff that's waiting for you in that mailbox, right? Okay. So that's what I call unnecessary debt that you have. And you are unable to take that money to do more purposeful things with them because maybe you want to buy a house, you know, or maybe you, you want to, um, I don't know, pay college tuition for your children, or you just need to like save up for your retirement, whatever it may be. But this unnecessary debt that's weighing down on you, you keep making more of it. So the, the load just gets heavier and heavier. And that score keeps going down and down and down and down and it's like low score you can't get this you can't get the things you need and it, it just starts to spiral out of control and that's kind of like how my life was okay sorry i'm just reading and one thing that i wanted to say is <laughs> You can feel so overwhelmed. I mean, you may be just overwhelmed with all the things that I've just said in this video already. Like, but you have to remember what I just said. You just made the decision that you're going to change. You made that decision that you're going to change. So you have all these things in front of you. Now you have your credit report. You joined that credit site. You went to the mailbox. You looked at all these bills. And now you're like, what the hell am I going to do? Am I right? Because that's what I did. I was just like, what the hell am I going to do? Um, one thing that I did do, and it may be an option for you. It may not be an option for you. Or maybe you can do it in a way that I didn't do it. Downgrade. A lot of people, they're very afraid to downgrade. And I downgraded in one of the biggest ways of my life in my living situation. You know, um, I haven't been living where I live for a long time. I was living in uh, what I would call very like a luxury, you know, because I don't have, I didn't have a lot of bills where I felt like, oh, I can afford this lifestyle. And I, you know what, for the most part, I could afford the lifestyle that I was living, or at least I thought I was, but you know what, that's all I was going to be able to do is go to my job, pay for that expensive place and not really get the things that I really wanted to get that can give me financial freedom in my eyes. This is just my plan. So I, I made the decision to downgrade. Um, it may not be in your housing situation. Maybe you can downgrade on the car. Like not everybody that, you know, used to be in the days I would see somebody driving a BMW, Range Rover, um, Mercedes Benz truck. And it's like, oh, that person has money, but that may not be true. You may be driving one of those cars, paying your car, no paying your insurance on those cars, putting gas in that car. And you are living paycheck to paycheck, or, you know, you cannot afford that, but you don't want to downgrade because of status. What would people think? I thought the same thing like when I left my home and I came here, but I did what I told you at the beginning of this video. I made the conscious decision that I needed a change. I needed to free up some money and that's exactly what I did. So that lightened up the load on me. And you know, like uh, you could have a gym in your building or something like that. Like I had a gym in my building, but then I had a membership at the gym. I was paying like $75 a month for a membership at the gym. And I had a member, I had that a so sophisticated gym, but I had a gym in my building. Um, I'm not really one like big on movies or stuff like that, but maybe you know, you're paying for things that you don't really have to pay for upgraded cable packages or um, Netflix or just, just 
and I'm not saying take everything out your life. Trust me, that is not what I'm saying. But maybe there's some things that you can downgrade. Just think about it. Think about it. There's something in your life that you don't have to have right now because you made the conscious decision to free up money. I don't know what it is. And I may be picking the wrong, the wrong things. You're like, you're like my Netflix. No, I cannot do that. Or I can't do this or I can't do that. I don't know what it is. Or maybe you need Netflix to keep you from going to the movies all the time. I don't really know what it is, but just figure something out. Everybody has something that they can cut out their lives. They just do. I'm just saying. Okay. Um, sometimes it's good to let other people know your goals. Um, I know with me, you know, because my friends are so used to, okay, you want to go on a trip, call Paris. You want to go out to eat, call Paris. Go out to a club, call Paris. But I had to let people know. I'm like, hey, I can't go. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't go there. I can't buy that. And you know, my friends, they, they start to get mad with me and, you know, because they're not used to me. Oh, you just don't want to go anywhere and you're just staying at home. You have to live your life. No, I've been living my life and that's what the problem is. I've been living my life too good. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the problem is. So I made the conscious decision and this is just where I am right now. Um, and just follow me on this. When I came back from my vacation in May, I said, I'm not going anywhere until January. I have a planned vacation for January. Between that, I would have went on about six trips. And I told everybody, and my friends are still going, they're going to all the places that I want to go. And I'm just going to look at their pictures and go to the bank with my money. I'm going to put my money in a bank for a change because I have to do something that's going to get me out of the situation that I was in. I, trust me, I made a lot of progress and I make videos about this stuff all the time. And that's why I'm sharing all this stuff with you. So sometimes you have to let people know like, Hey, you know what? Be the bigger person and you can be that poor person. They call me poor. They call me poor all the time. Oh, she's poor. She doesn't have any money. She's broke. I am. Yes, I am. I'm broke. Yep. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They could, at first it used to bother me, but now I'm just like, Oh, you just wait wait. You just wait. So don't even worry about that. Make your goals known. You be the stronger person. And you know what? Eventually they may start to think like, hmm, what is she doing? What does she have? You know, maybe I need to follow her. So don't be ashamed to let people know what you're doing because it's a positive thing. Okay. So you need to, let me see, try to come out. Okay, so what I did is I divided my bills, um, and I talked about this previously. I divided my bills into things that I have to pay, and I may, I told you about the things that you have to pay, like your housing expenses, um, your utilities, maybe your student loans, um, child care, just certain things that you just have to pay, and even with child care, maybe you can buddy up, or you know, you have a family member, or I don't really, I don't have any children, so I don't really know, but you know, you have to be creative. Sit down, just like I have this, um, paper. I, this is actually my life binder. Um, you have to be creative in your life. Go through things in your life, nitpick things and find things in your life that you can change that you can buddy up with. And in my other video, I kind of talked about different things that you can do to like try to save money. So those are things that you need to do. Then let's talk about this unnecessary debt. I call it you in unnecessary debt that you may have, which is your credit cards and your payday loans. Because I mean, like, yes, I've had a payday loan before. And you know what? That is like the craziest thing that any person could ever do. I'm almost ashamed to say that I've had that, but I have, I've had a payday loan before. And it's just, if you don't know what it is, it's a horrible way to get money. And it just keeps you in debt. You know, they give you this little amount of money and they know that you can only come back and pay that little bit. So they make all this interest off you and you start to feel it when you're taking them that money and you, you see it's, it's a horrible amount of interest. And if you have to get into something like that, it's very, very terrible. And you need to try to work your way out of that. Um, I mean, if anyone wanted to know about them, I mean, I could like tell you in another video, I'm not going to like focus this on payday loans, but it's just, it's just a horrible way, just as is with credit cards, you know, because you're paying all this interest and you know, your monthly payment, maybe $200 a month, but only 50, $60 of that is actually going to your balance. It's just a way to be trapped, you know? So it's like, these are the things that you want to try to get rid of. Okay. I talked to you about that. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about the envelope method. One time I went to this 
financial um it was like a little seminar because this is this is years and years ago i went to a financial seminar and i was like so just depressed. I just felt like there was nothing that I could do. It was free. And, you know, I found it in my city. Um, it was free. It was like a video tape. You just sat there pretty much and just watched it. And this man talked about so many good things. He did. He really, really did. And I need to find out what this video was. I cannot remember. But what I do remember is this. And this is what's helping me right now become a better person. And it's called the envelope method. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's an excellent, excellent way to live your life, to get out of debt and to try to make a change, or at least it is working for me. So basically with me, I have four envelopes. You may have more envelopes than this, but you really shouldn't have that many more. I'm just gonna um, sit this down. Just make sure, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, so I have four envelopes. And mine, one is me, one is UD, remember that unnecessary debt, one is bank, and one is bills, okay? So basically with me, when I get paid, everybody pretty much knows what you get paid. Like, um, it could be like, you know, I, I don't really know what you make them up, but what I do is I add up everything that I get paid in one month, all the income that I have coming in from everywhere. Nobody really has extra money, unless you're some rich person, you know, and I, even then I don't really know, but nobody has extra money. So don't say you have an extra $50. Nobody has extra money. And if you do have extra money, I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to be doing with it. So this envelope is my bills. So basically it's not literally that I put the money in here because nowadays, you know, everybody has their bank accounts and you know, you pay things, but I really keep a strategic, like I have a way to know exactly what I get paid and what bills, what bills I have to pay. This is the envelope that would include the mortgage, the rent, the utility bills, you know, things that you just can't get around paying your bills. Okay. So when I get paid first things first, this envelope is taken care of. This envelope needs to be taken care of your bills. Okay. No way around it. You don't, you don't worry about these. This envelope has to get taken care of. And so then you're left with a balance and that's the bill envelope. Then the next envelope is the bank. Because what I said in my other video, you need to make yourself into a bill. And that's what we call the bank. Sorry, you guys, you know I live by a hospital. I'm so sorry. Let's just let them pass. Okay, so I label mine the bank slash me as a bill. This is me as a bill. So this means that you need to come up with a certain amount of money that you're going to pay the bank every single month. And don't just put this, like for me, I don't put this where all my money goes. I don't put this where I can readily get to it. I actually joined a credit union. I have no checks, no cash station card, no anything. And I don't care if you are putting $10 in here, $20, you come up with a set amount. It's a bill now and you put that money in this envelope or take it to the bank. You know what I'm saying? Take it to a bank, take it to a place that you can't get to so easily. That envelope, it's gone. So now you know that was your paycheck, right? That was your paycheck, am I right? Then your unnecessary debt. Once you get all these bills together, you know, all these bills and whether you're consolidating and, you know, I can go more in debt about like, you know, like if you're going to consolidate, some people may have filed bankruptcy and you're doing the right thing. You're in it. It's not like a death sentence because you filed bankruptcy. You can come out of bankruptcy. You can start to get your credit back together as soon as you come out or even while you're in bankruptcy. You know what I'm saying? So don't think that's a death sentence. And, uh, you know, you may be doing with me. I went to like a credit counseling. This was like years and years ago where someone actually helped me take all my bills, helped me negotiate with the people. And I was just paying one monthly bill until I just paid everything off minus my student loans. Okay. So that's what I did. Um, and I can talk more about that too, if you guys want me to, if you, you know, ask me to make a video about it, but that those were the things that I did because unnecessary debt, those credit cards, all this, all this revolving unnecessary debt that you don't have. You need to come up with a plan and you need to pay it. 
every single month. The same way they would make you do in bankruptcy, the same way they're gonna make you do in credit card consolidation or credit card counseling, they're gonna make you pay one payment every single month and you need to come up with that amount you need to talk to your creditors you need to whoever you're going to do bankruptcy consolidation whatever you're doing you need to pay your bills every month and guess what's left me me doesn't take you know it back in most people's lives me comes before everything me is first you start putting money in this envelope first and that's how you get in trouble you are last this is the me envelope this is different from the the me envelope for the bank that's the bill that you're paying this is what you go out with what you eat with what you party with what you drink with what you travel with this is the me envelope okay then you put something in here that's what you have left after all this stuff is taken care of this is what you have left so let me tell you for me after I, you know, bought my food and of course, you know, you may want to have like, um, you know, your grocery bill and everything because you do have to eat, but you know, smart, you need to cook, you need to cook, you need to take that lunch to work, you need to stay out the restaurants, okay, you need to meal prep, you need to do those things, okay? So let's go to this me envelope, let's talk about me personally. So last week I was sitting up and, you know, I was looking at my bank account and I had that uh, extra money. There is no extra money. That extra money, I was like, I'm taking over to the bank. I put that in the bank envelope and that went over to the bank. And what I left myself, I left myself $159, okay, for me. And that was over a span of almost 10 days or two weeks almost two weeks. This is after I bought my food. This is just what I left for myself. And, and what I did is, you know, I went out and I did a couple of things and I said that anything that I had left over, I was going to, I was going to take that to the bank too. Anything that I had left over, if I did have something over, but I didn't feel guilty because that's what I left for me to enjoy life, you know, and you can either make a subdivision of this envelope and maybe you have like a me and, you know, for vacation, you know, make a little, you can have as many envelopes as you need to. Like if you want to have vacation, have a vacation envelope but you have to stick to this method. It makes so much sense and it works out. It really, really works. So let's, let, let me bring you up to speed. Now, I don't get to have another fill up of this me envelope until Friday when I get paid. I have $29 left. <laughs> and um, I don't really have $29 in my account, but you know what I'm gonna do tomorrow? What I would have done before I started doing this, the money that I had, in, oh, I have some extra money. Let me go buy me a new outfit. Let me do this. Let me do that. No, that money is going to the bank. That is going in the bank envelope. And I have $29 because that's what I set aside for myself two weeks ago. And that's still what I'm going. So case in point, my friend went and um, the reason why I have $29, my friend went to a winery and I am not even one for like alcohol like that, like actually like an alcohol, but this wine was so good and she was at the winery and each bottle was like $14 and she's just like, you know what? Oh my God, like I'm getting me six bottles and I was like, mm, yeah, pretty much $15. I'm thinking like, I can't afford to get six bottles because I only have this certain amount of money in my meat me envelope so I told her to give me two bottles which brought me to like $35 she brought me the two bottles and I guess I'm going to just be sipping that I'm going to be sipping that until I replenish this and if I choose to spend my me money on wine again you know this week which I'm not I have two bottles I'm going to drink it slowly or something like that but you get the point that I'm saying right you can't look at extra money in your account because there is no extra money. You can't look at money in your account like okay I, I paid everything and now now I um I have this money to just spend. No, you don't. Because if you do, then put it in your unnecessary debt envelope and pay something off there. Pay something off early or save it however you want to do it, but put it in one of the positive envelopes and not the, you know, just, just doing things. And that's how you have to do. That's what I've been doing. And I, I've been doing it now for a month and it's working out for me. And if you need to, if you're going on vacation or you're doing something, then maybe you need to have a vacation envelope and then, you know, pay for your things. Don't, don't just throw everything on your credit card, you know, like, like make a plan. Like I have a plan. I'm going on vacation in January. So I already have a plan out that how I'm going to start saving for this vacation, how I'm going to pay. I'm not putting anything on my credit card for what? So when I come back home, I got to worry about, I have to pay for 
for this vacation or you have to still pay for something five years after you've done it. No, just pay for it now. Make that sacrifice. Do that downgrade because guess what? What did I say at the beginning of this video? You made the decision to change your life. You made the decision to get out of debt. Try this method, okay? And I know like I was so probably confusing with this video because I'm just talking about different things, but I just, I was so excited to tell you about this because it really, really does work. If you do it, you stick to it. Stop making me, this me first. You know what I'm saying? And make those other things first because you have a goal. If you don't have a goal, you know, then hey, keep doing what you're doing. Keep keep waiting to go to the mailbox every month. Keep letting your phone ring with 1-800 numbers. Keep watching your score go from six to five to four, your credit score. You know what I'm saying? Because no matter how much people say credit scores aren't important, they kind of are. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't do nothing with a bad credit score, not even move into an apartment. And we both know this, okay? So I hope you guys found this video informative. I hope I didn't sound like a mom and I hope I didn't confuse you. <laughs> if you have any questions or you just want me to talk about something like that's like, you know, just strictly one thing that I talked about in this video that you want me to expand on. And again, this is just from my experiences. This is just what's working for me. I am not a professional, but I do want to see you do well. And I want to do well too, because I have such a big goal. You guys, I have a big goal. And if you have a big goal right now, and um, it, it's taking me time, time, it's going to take time. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're trying to get that credit score up, it is going to take time, but it will work out. And I have such a big goal that I'm trying to achieve. And I don't care. Everybody could call me poor or whatever they want to say. I have a plan. I have a plan. And so come on with me with this challenge. You know, it's just like, should I call it the Paris Saving Challenge or something like that? I'm gonna come up with a name for it or whatever. Make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure you share it, you know, just with anybody. I'm so sorry it's long. I'm about to like sign off. I love you guys so much. And I will be back um, in about a week or so. Um, just to tell you some more things because you know I'm full of stuff. But yeah, I'm really happy. I have a big go and I can't wait to tell you guys about it. So I love you so much. Stay positive. Do something positive for yourself and somebody else. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.